I'd like to, to welcome you all to what we have called Diffusing with Difficult Customers in a Municipal Environment. And uh, we have very little extra time. In fact, the material in that book, which I wrote actually, in case you're wondering or need to spell my name, is uh, really is enough to fill at least two days uh, of training time. And obviously, that's, it's just not feasible. So we have half, we have basically four hours. Uh, we're going to try and maximize as much as possible, and you have that as a reference book, and we'll talk about how you can use it to, to get better at all of the diffusing stuff is what, what I talk about. Okay, um, before I continue, I just wanted to know how many of you, knowing that you were coming today, were really, really keen on doing role plays in front of the group? Hands up now. And there are likely less people than ate the sandwiches, which is which is interesting. You mean you you, you didn't want to do role plays? No. You're kidding me. I thought for sure. I was gonna say except for you. Okay. Well. Okay. So we are gonna do role plays. Okay. So I, I just wanted to, wanted to make sure no one would be disappointed. We're not gonna do any of that stuff. Um, Hey, if you want to role, uh, no, I was going to say if you want to role play, approach me privately. But I'm thinking that no. be, that's not no 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 no. Okay. So as you, you can see on the slide, uh, the notion is dealing with difficult customers in government, professionally, efficiently, which means quickly. Okay, because that's one of the things that we're going to talk about is how do you shorten these kinds of interactions with the most difficult customers and clients so that you can get on with the rest of your job, okay? Because one person who's yelling and screaming for 20 minutes means that there's probably all these other people that you can't be tending to, okay? And then the final part is the, is low stress. Is I don't know about you, but most people that I work with say to me that, the, you know, I really love my job, and actually one of my books is if it says, it, if it wasn't for the customers, I'd really like my job, okay? is that the customers can, uh, it, are, the, are the source, the customers in management, though we want to talk about the management, uh, the customers are the source of a lot of stress. You, you tend to take customers home with you, uh, especially when they've been very difficult and you wonder, you think, oh, I should have said this, or if only I come up with the killing verbal bar to crush them like bugs, that kind of thing. Okay, so part of what we're talk, going to be talking about is uh, the notion of uh, the, the benefit of diffusing as it pertains to your, the enjoyment of the job. And it also, when you start to get good at this, I'll tell you a little, not so much a secret, that you feel a lot more in control and confident in all these situations where you're uncertain. Okay, so. All right, so just briefly where we're going. Okay, number one, by the end of the course, you should have a pretty good idea of how you can get people to stop talking and listen so you can help or do your, in other words, do your job, okay? Because that's number one problem. Angry people, they talk, and they talk, and they talk, and often it's very unpleasant, and you can't get a word in edgewise. So you can't actually, even if you want to help, they're, if they're yelling, you can't. So we're gonna talk about specific techniques, and we're talking what you can say, what you can do, to get them to be quiet and to start working with you, okay? And that's our focus is not going to be on a, on a whole bunch of abstract stuff, but it's going to be on what you can say and what you can do. Okay. Secondly, the, by doing this kind of, of diffusing, you reduce the intensity and length of the angry interactions. Okay. Now, I don't make claims that the stuff that I teach people actually reduces potential assaults and violence because I have no research or documentation to show that. Okay. But I am confident looking at statistics and stuff. Uh, things like pushing, things like that, are almost always, um, always have a, a verbal component that happens before, okay? So the better you are to do, to do the verbal diffusing, the less likely, I believe, you are to be the subject of some kinds of physical uh, intimidation, as I call it, okay? Staying professional under fire, it's kind of obvious, okay? Uh, we're going to talk about what enough is enough, drawing a line. When is it, when do you say no? How do you say no? When do you end an interaction? How do you do it professionally? How do you do it so it doesn't make things worse? Okay, we'll talk about that. And we're gonna talk about preventing and responding to insults and, and verbal attacks, and we have a whole bunch of other techniques that are gonna be available to you. 
Okay? I will promise you, I think I will promise you, that you will find some new stuff here. Uh, this, this is a little different than probably what other, other people do. And, but we'll see. You get to decide. And hopefully you'll find some techniques that, that fit for you. Okay. So, normally at the, uh, at the beginning of a session, uh, you, you go to training, you know, the person, guy in a sports jacket, whatever. I feel a little overdressed. I also feel like a, a geezer. I'm quite excited we have a lot of younger people here because I don't usually get to work with younger people. So either they will really suck big time, folks, all you, all you, or, or, or for you guys, right, uh, or it won't. So, uh, which reminds me, uh, during this whole process, please feel free to interrupt and ask questions and, and, and comments, okay? While we are short of time, I would rather cut out something I say to be able to hear from you guys. Okay, and uh, I would say that's particularly the case for some of the younger people because it gives me an opportunity to understand how this stuff fits with you guys because it is a different generation. You're, you're dealing with probably different generations too, you know, in, in terms of teenagers and younger people who may be using facilities, whatever. Okay, so usually the trainer, or whatever, says, hello, I'm so and so, blah 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 blah, gives you know song and dance about why you should pay attention to him or her, why, you know, that there's some, there's some value here. Hey, I mean, we've got to do that, okay? Um, and, but this time, I, I haven't told you anything about myself yet, and I have another thing that we're going to do instead, something that's a little bit different. So rather than my introducing myself, I'm going to have you do a, a little exercise for me, uh, just to, at your seat. By the way, I don't generally, I, one of the things I'd like to do is have is no embarrassment. So, you know, if you're comfortable sitting and you know whatever you want to say, anything, that's, that's fine with me. Okay? And if you're going to talk all the while, that's fine with me too. <laughs> I'm just teasing her. Okay. Um, now, the first thing we're going to talk about is the power of the language and the words that we use. One of the things is for people who deal with, you know, angry customers, clients, is that there's sort of this sense of, of like helplessness. That you actually can't do anything in those situations to, to make a difference because it, it just seems like that all this stuff is coming at you and you try with what you have. And it, it turns out actually that language, the words that we use, are really, really important in, in preventing escalation of conflict early on and also in dealing with it when it occurs. So I have a little exercise for you. Uh, and what I would like you to do is if you open up to page uh, five in this one, actually this is the, I know this is a little confusing. Okay, I want you to tell me you're, since you're a, uh, you, you've, been to, you've probably been to training your groups before. Um, if I, if I was to introduce myself intentionally to offend you or make you feel like the the, the seminar was going to be a waste of time or that you shouldn't listen to me, that in other words, how could I introduce? How would you have me introduce myself really badly? so that I would make you even angry, okay? So what kinds of things could I say? I'd like you to take maybe one minute. There's a little box on page five. I would like you just to write down, just jot down some ideas, okay? As a, 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 a really, really bad introduction that would make you want to leave right away. And hopefully I haven't done it. Yeah? Body language, like if you had your arms crossed. Okay. Um, what if they rolled your eyes to your bit? As we're talking with us, and poor eye contact. Okay. So. Okay. So, what would those things say to you? That you don't want to be here. That I don't want to be here. Okay. Great. I guess similarly, if I started off by saying, "Hi, I'm 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 Robert Bacall, and it's um, and um, 
Well, no, 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 how would I put this? And it's great to be in St. Albert. It's, uh, it's a little small for my tastes. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting home as soon as possible, but uh, we'll have a good day. Right? Same kind, it's the same kind of notion, right? It's that sort of, a, a, I don't know, disinterest or lack of concern. Okay, what else you got? Okay. Apparently you guys are doormats and need to get a backbone and I will show you how. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm afraid to ask, but so okay, so what about that uh, would be annoying to you or it's pure well, your attitude? Yeah. Condescending. It's condescending. Okay. I mean, there's actually a lot there. You said to be put me off. And, and it also, there's a, 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 tech, a, a term that I use, and it's called one up, one down, mm -hmm. in the sense that, is that I, yeah. if I say that, right, it's like, what I'm saying is, there's something wrong with you, and I'm going to fix it, yeah. okay? And that's really just patronizing, condescending, that kind of stuff. Okay, what else you got? Yeah. Okay, so could we call that the the expert <laughs> syndrome? Uh, it's and you know what? It's better arrogance. I think is probably the better word for it. Okay, what else? I would an inappropriate joke. Ah, I've done those. <laughs> Though you save yourself with the uh, Alberta, Ottawa. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't know it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, inappropriate joke. Uh, clearly, there's a number of reasons why. Uh, what what is what would be inappropriate though? Oh, well, I, I mean the obvious stuff. It's obvious would be sexist, racist stuff, or actually any put down humor, right? Where. Uh, Anything that's not at the expense of the person who's using the humor, I would guess. Okay. What else? Voice. Monotone voice. Okay, okay. monotone so, voice. Like, you know, the monotone voice. They're speaking from notes. They're, you know, they're reading things. And also, I find if their grammar isn't good, it's not good. Say so, it so. Oh. I seen you today. You know, when people start off a, a presentation and, and they don't, that turns me right off. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, it's actually interesting because the monotone voice uh, also uh, ties into this I'm not interested kind of in impression. Whether that's correct or not, I think it's, uh, it's a lack of interest. Okay. What else? Anything else? Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, the attire. I mean, the thong is an exaggeration. What, a, what someone did in, in one group where I did this exercise was actually quite interesting because uh, a couple of the people said if you did, if you'd come in in a suit, that would have really turned me off. I wouldn't have liked that. That was actually in, I guess, a t uh, like a. a the town looks kind of like yours, in that uh, it's not a huge place and it's not a, it's not a small place, but uh, it just it wasn't that kind of scene. It wasn't you know it would be like this person coming in going like this fancy guy, you know, and so they several people said that would be kind of a barrier to to the process. <laughs> okay, last shot. Anybody else? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, actually, that's, that's a good one. Because I wrote it down, I've changed life, so I've lost two of them. Too enthusiastic, sorry. Yeah, actually, 
What's interesting about that is that in terms of tone of voice, um, I mean, enthusiasm is often it, it's certainly from body language, and it's also tone, it's also tone of, tone of voice too. Uh, and the, what's I think uh, an important part in terms of what we're talking about, and what we'll, we'll talk about, is the appropriateness of the tone of voice. Is that if someone is and to use a really uh, uh, probably a bad example, but if you find out that someone is uh, someone's relative has passed away, then your tone of voice when you are speaking to that individual has to be commensurate with commensurate with that come from. It has to it has to fit that context, right? Is that you're not going to be happy and bouncy. You're going you have to because otherwise that shows that you just clued out, right? And then you're not empathetic and you don't care. Okay, so tone of voice is a big uh, is a big part of it, and it's also a big part of customer interaction, right? Uh, so if you have ever been as a customer in a situation where you've been really, really, really angry, and the person smiles, it's very you you know right? It's like don't you just want to hit them over the head with the television or whatever it is? I mean, it just when my when I'm upset and my wife smiles, I can't stand it. It just drives. You want to anyway. It just drives me crazy. Okay, so we're going to talk about more, more of that stuff. But some of the idea here is that what we have just in this like kind of little example is examples of things that one can say and do that right at the beginning of something, right at the beginning of an interaction, put people off. What people can say, what you can say with customers makes a difference, okay? And the same thing, if you go to a job interview, you can say things that are gonna put, basically blow it in one sentence, or you can say things that actually can make it work for you. And okay? now we're not interested in job interviews, I hope, but we are interested in the use of language to prevent problems. There is some language that is fighting, that sets people up to, to be contrary and nasty. Okay? And one of those things that we sort of alluded to was this notion of arrogance. And arrogance comes in many forms. You may not be arrogant, but you may be using certain kinds of sentence structures and words that convey arrogance. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about two kinds of language. One of, those ty one of the types of language is called cooperative communication, and the other is called confrontational communication. And actually, I, uh, not a long time ago, I was uh, be, actually before Facebook, so I can tell you how long ago, uh, I worked with a group of uh, communication experts sort of virtually online to, to sort of create these and the examples and everything. And, um, so I've ended up incorporating it here. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So this is where you want to be generally with the language that you use. And by the way, this not only works with customers to prevent uh, con uh, escalation uh, and, to cool, and to cool things down, but it also works with coworkers and with people in family, family, spouses, that kind of thing. Okay, uh, and I think you'll see that to jump out. Okay, number one, we know that in a discussion where Person A thinks that person B is not going to consider the other person's opinions. That creates anger. Okay, so cooperative communication involves displaying a willingness to hear the other person's side. I know that with customers, that kind of make that that's kind of nasty because you know the answer may be for whatever they're requesting, maybe you no know anyway. But sometimes it's better to, to listen to what they have to say, to consider their opinion, because as soon as you try and shut that down, they will fight more. Okay? So cooperative communication, and we'll get more specific reasons soon, involves showing an openness to hear the other person's side or, or position. Okay? So, oh. okay. Wrong button. Okay. Okay. Now, the, another thing that came across a little when we were talking about the, the introduction is that arrogance thing. And what we have here is that when you are talking 
If you try and come across, again, as we're talking about with customers, as you're being always right and always perfect, they will fight you and try to find some hole in your argument or some hole in your position just because everyone likes to knock down the person who comes across as arrogant, difficult, and always right. Okay? And the language that we use, again, will reflect that. Okay? You can come across as that the, the traditional stereotype of the government government employee. Okay? And when you do that, you get a lot more crap from people than if you are willing to use the kinds of cooperative language that, that we're talking about. Okay? So you don't want to come across as always right, as as a hundred percent sure about everything, even if you are. Okay? This isn't about rules and regulations. Working with customers is actually not so much about rules and regulations as it is about person to person. Okay? Yes, you need to convey rules, regulations, procedure, whatever you have to, to do as part of your job. But the way you do it is where the payoff is. Okay? And that's what we're talking about. How many times I wonder if I'm going to do that today? Because <laughs> if I do that again, Laura, you're going to have to come up and handle I'm this. Take that point away from you. No, no. <laughs> And then use the tiny button above the two. That sounded really condescending. Sorry. <laughs> just just a little. Who said that? I don't know who even said that. I was just trying to be helpful, sir. Oh. I apologize. No, no, don't apologize. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's discuss. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. I did it again! Okay, sorry. No. I'm going to get serious here. Okay, there we go. Okay, the invitation to discuss and not argue. Okay. Um, discussion is not about feelings and it's not about proving the other person wrong, so that's part of where you need to be with this. Uh, discussion is just a give and take kind of deal. Okay, a desire to work with and not dictate. Now, I know that part of your job is that may actually be to dictate. To